I know you think going over this is boring, but it's like owning a car. You have to do maintenance every so often. Good. Now let's see a rollover. <coughs> anyway, that's not right. Oh, the door. Maybe I'm the one who needs to refresh your course. Why do they make these straps so hard to adjust? I've got this pinched nerve in my neck and this is so not helping. Hi. I'm Anita. You must be the roommate. Excuse Anita? Me? Oh, Lucy! I didn't know you were in D.C. Why didn't you call? I did. I left a message on your voicemail. I never got it. Oh, brutal. You know, the cell phone company and the airline should get together and become, like, Losers Incorporated. <laughs> Actually, I'm supposed to be flying to Miami for a personal trainer's conference, except I sort of misbooked my connection out of D.C., and now there aren't any flights left until tomorrow morning. I was kind of hoping that... You need a place to stay? Of course. You're welcome anytime. Are you kidding? If I found out that you were in D.C. and didn't look me up, you'd have some answering to do. <laughs> as long as it's all right with Sue. Sue, this is my cousin, Anita. She needs a place to stay for the night. You, you mind? Of course not. You're welcome. Oh, that's right. I forgot. You emailed me your roommate was Dev. Yes, and if you remember to face her, she's amazing at reading lips. Oh, sorry. Yes, okay. I'm through. And that's Levi. Oh, nice poochie. But I am so allergic to you. I didn't know you were allergic to dogs. Neither did I, until my acupuncture herbalist ran a follicle profile. Well, if your follicles can handle the Levi factor for one night, our house is your house. You can have my room. Awesome. Ah. Uh, I think he likes you. My neck is killing me. I guess Anita knew what she was doing when she jumped at the chance to take it back. I thought she was going to pull a muscle when she leaped on that offer so fast. <laughs> Hope nobody had any plans for today because we just got handed a very hot tip from our friends at the Treasury Department. They raided a Baltimore counterfeiting operation and hit pay dirt. Perhaps not just a money-making operation. One of the computers they found had some bonus files. Templates for making fake Dutch passports. And a number of photos of young men ages 18 to 25. No doubt to be used on those same passports. Flick of the passport maker's wrist and you're a loyal subject of Her Highness Queen Beatrix, even if you've never heard of her. And something tells me that those passports aren't intended to be used to smuggle master Renaissance paintings into the country. Immigration cross-checked the names on the passports with international flight manifests for the last month. All of them originated out of Grozny, Chechnya. Did he say Chechnya? That's what I was afraid of. What am I missing here? It's something, frankly, we've been concerned about. The uh, Chechens are every bit as radical as the most extreme Arab Muslims. Maybe more so. But they look like any other Europeans. You always wondered when the day would come when they'd start using non-Arabs to infiltrate our borders. Or are they Al-Qaeda? It could be. We've seen increased cooperation between the two groups in Pakistan, Afghanistan, as well as Chechnya. Well, whoever they are, they've just put us in the middle of the game. All seven of the men on the passports have already entered the United States. And we know they all flew to the D.C. area. If I live to be a hundred And never see the seven wonders That'll be all right Should my tender heart be broken I will cry those teardrops from knowing We've tracked their past movements. They all came in on different days, different airlines, tickets paid in cash. Right out of the terrorist cell handbook. None of them were on any terrorist watch lists? 
Which doesn't mean they are terrorists, just terrorists we weren't aware of. Nor has the Dutch government ever heard of any of them. So what are we thinking? They've come over to blend in, be a terrorist though? Or are they a batch of new recruits, specially selected and trained for this mission? And if that's the case, what could their mission be? We're already coordinating with DOD and Secret Service on increased security of the natural targets. We also have to think about events, public gatherings, holidays, anything that could get them a lot of headlines. Sue and Lucy, see what's on the social calendar for the next couple months. Anybody ready for some good news? Bit of a shock for my delicate system, but I'll risk it. Everyone entering the U.S. on a foreign passport now gets their picture taken at the counter. And thanks to the snappy shorts and shirt ensemble worn by one of our seven Chechenian dwarves, we were able to spot him on the surveillance cam footage from out front of Baltimore International, stepping into a limousine. Wouldn't happen to have a license plate. Here it is. Sergei Suryabya. Who can say these crazy names? I got him off the 515 flight from Amsterdam. I don't suppose he paid with a check or credit card? No, he's prepaid. Guy came in two days before, said he wanted the ride for his cousin. Took care of it in cash. Can you describe the man who paid you? Medium height, fair hair, pretty average looking. Did you get his name? No. Did he ever hire you to pick up anyone else? Anyone who uh, looked like any of those guys? I don't think so. Do you have a record of where you took this Mr. Rabiev? Sure. So a guy takes a limousine to a dive like this? Yeah, go figure. Oof, cockroach that big should have a name. Rooms are $10 an hour, $35 for the night. Very reasonable rates. We're not in the market, I'm with the FBI. We we're looking for this man. He would have checked in about two weeks ago. Do you know him? They come and they go here. I work days, you know, he could have come in at night. You uh, wouldn't have a register, I don't suppose. What was I thinking? Any other employees around we might be able to talk to? Maids, maintenance people, security? Sorry, doesn't ring a bell. Righto, thanks anyway, mate. Any luck? Not a very observant crowd. Yeah, well, how close would you want to look at this place? Excuse me? You uh, were looking for the Russian man? That's right. Do you know him? It's okay. We're not going to get you in any trouble. He was staying in 113. I went in there last week to change the sheets. They had blood all over them. We asked the owner what we should do. He don't like no trouble, so he just said throw them out and say nothing to no one. Bad for business, he said. I can see why I might say that. Thank you. You did the right thing. 113, good. Okay, thanks. Room looks clean, or as clean as a place like this can get. Techies are on their way to see what they can find. Did you get anything? Oh, the rest of the staff loosened up a little bit. Basically confirmed what the uh, maid said. So the guy checked in about two weeks ago, wasn't around much, kept mostly to himself. So what are we looking at here? An accident? Really bad nosebleed? Yeah, we'll see what the lab boys can give us. That cockroach gets around. Hungry. I may not even wait for the plate. I'm gonna chow down on the steamed veggie platter, then turn into a vegetable myself. Anita! You would not believe the day I had. Eight hours at the airport trying to get a flight out. You know, there's a storm system hitting the entire state of Florida. Miami is completely closed down. <laughs> Who knew it was hurricane season? If you're hungry, there's plenty of Chinese food. <sighs> Help yourself. Provided the weather breaks, they did manage to book me a flight out the day after tomorrow, which means I'll miss half my conference. But since I'm here in DC, I'm determined to make the best of it and do some sightseeing. Maybe this all happened for a reason, you know? Like a chance for a personal growth experience. So you're going to be staying a little longer? Well, if you guys don't mind, of course. But if I'm even the slightest imposition... Don't be ridiculous. We're happy to have you. So? Mm. You don't like Chinese food? Well, the way they actually make it in China, of course I do. But what they call Chinese food here in the West, please. It's got MSG, the protein-carb ratio is toxic. And plus, I am a strict lacto-ovarian vegan. 
You have peanut butter and jelly. Thanks anyway, but I checked this morning and there is nothing in this apartment that's in my dietary range. But, you know, it's fine. I go on short-term class once every six weeks anyways. Cleanses the toxins. Anita, you've got to eat. There's got to be something in D.C. that's on your menu. Well, there is this holistic health food restaurant I read about in Georgetown, but yeah, I wouldn't know how to get there. As soon as I'm finished here, I will take you. I thought we'd never get out of there. Nita says she has to chew every bite at least 50 times to aid in her digestion. Who even knew you could digest eggplant spirulina casserole? Who knew you'd ever want to? <laughs> if she's going to stay longer, maybe you should at least get your bedroom back. Oh, it's okay. I'm so tired. I can sleep on a bed of nails. I'll be fine. But why are you still up? I was going to take a shower before bed. But I made the mistake of not getting started before you got home. Uh, I know. She's been in there longer than some third world regime stay in power. With any luck, we'll have hot water again by next week. I'm sorry for all this. If she's not out in the next couple of minutes, I'll storm the place. Listen, Anita can be frustrating. But I've always kind of felt a little sorry for her because she had a tough start. I mean, her dad left when she was a baby, basically. And then her mom got remarried to this guy that she never got along with. And he left, and it was just her mom and her. But still, she has a way of making it tough to empathize with her. Everybody in the family's reached out to her, but a lot of them have gotten kind of fed up. I'm one of her last offenders. That's admirable. The fuse blew. And uh, I think you're gonna need a new curling iron, too. I've never heard of half the stuff on Anita's special shopping list. Free range egg white extract? Probably on the shelf right next to Reach Free Soy Lasagna. Ah, the good host syndrome. Open your door to a wayward traveler, and before you know it, you're at their mercy. Your routine's disrupted, your cupboards emptied, the sanctity of your castle hopelessly compromised. Well, what do you recommend, Sir Miles? Talking about in the street? No, I recommend a drawbridge and a moat. Never let them breach the gates in the first place. I follow the three-day law. They stay longer than that. I throw their gear on the porch, change the locks, turn on the sprinklers. Now that's hospitable. Ah, oh, it's just for another day or two. Preliminary lab reports back on Sergei's motel room. Not very helpful, although they did find traces of human blood. Um, DNA typing pending. No hiss yet on the other six passport photos either. We'll keep working them. I, however, do have good news. The perennial bearer of good tidings. I'm gonna stop watching the news and get my updates only from you. Turns out the pictures our passport forger used were sent to him by way of a U.S.-based ISP. Thanks to U.S. law, we're allowed to subpoena any foreign computers that use that provider, which we're in the process of doing through our Ligat in Chechnya. Hey, if the Ligat still Butch Gilmore, tell him to stop surfing those Chechnyan mail-order bride sites and put a rush on it. Just ran the phone records for Sergei's hotel room. You're not going to like what I found. He made four calls total, three for pizza. Apparently, even alleged terrorists crave pepperoni. But one was to Syntho Processing Labs, Inc. The chemical plant? They refine compounds for fuel and waste management in White Oak. I called the company, checked around, but apparently nobody's heard the name Sergei Serebyev. Well, not surprising. If he's casing the place, he'd hardly want to broadcast his name, whether it's fake or not. Well, all right. I reckon we go wave his picture around, see if anybody's seen him lurking around the lunchroom. Sure, I recognize him. I heard a couple weeks ago. He works here. Yeah. His name's not Sergey. He said it's Boris. He's a janitor. When's he come on duty? Uh, Any time now. Side exits. I'm 
must be getting good. I didn't even say bang. Sam 36, subject is down and under control. Check this out. He's bleeding. Somebody must have got to him before we did. He's missing one kidney. From the healing of the tissue, I'd guess it was probably taken out about three weeks ago. Well, that explains the bleeding. It's a good thing you brought him in when you did. He's got a major infection working in there. The suturing was very sloppy. Whoever did the surgery defines quick and dirty. The terrorist plan I ever heard of involves giving up a kidney. Maybe not, but there's another kind of criminal activity that does. And so far, the research we're getting back from our people in Chechnya is pointing right at it. Apparently, somebody is offering locals an opportunity to come to America, earn a little money to boot, and all they have to do in exchange is to volunteer to have a kidney removed once they're here. So we started out hunting terrorists and ended up with an organ transplant ring instead. Just when you thought it was safe to walk around your village with two good kidneys. Do our sources know who's calling the shots on this operation? Not yet, but we did research the illegal selling of organs. Because of the shortage of organs on the legal registry, the waiting lists are longer than some people have to live. So with that kind of demand, you know, someone's going to find a way to supply them with what they need for a price. That's not legal, is it? That's where the loophole comes in. They're called organ brokers. Say, I need a kidney. You need a kidney. But I'm bum. I can legally pay a broker to find me an organ, but neither the broker nor I can pay the donor for that organ. So the donor's giving up a kidney out of the goodness of their heart to a complete stranger? I imagine on occasion that happens, but more often it's for payment under the table. No cash may exchange hands at the hospital, but the next thing you know, the donor and his family are driving around with new cars and living in a new house. And then there's the full-blown black market, usually involving donors from overseas. That's what I think we have going with Sergei. People recruited, brought over, often against their will, to have a kidney or a lung removed by someone who may not even be a surgeon. The paperwork gets forged. The doctors on the recipient end either don't know the true origin or look the other way. And they perform a transplant with an organ that's been bought and paid for with literal blood money. Meanwhile, a bloke like Sergei winds up with a nasty scar and a menial job he's too sick to perform. We need to talk to Sergei. That would be the unconscious Sergei to you. The hospital said they'll call the minute he wakes up. If he wakes up. You guys didn't have to go to all this trouble for me. No problem. There's a health food store right on the way home. Well, then you're in for a treat. I am going to make you some of my famous tofu lasagna. Uh, to... Lasagna with tofu, I think? It's OK, Anita. You don't have to cook for us. Oh, please. It's the least I can do to thank you for putting up with me. Uh-oh. What? Oh, I know it's not the exact brand that you asked for, but it is organic without preservatives. Yes, but there's broth in it. That's not good? They don't say it, but I'm pretty sure they use a beef-based stock. Do you know how many toxins are in the bodies of cows? Is that a rhetorical question? I can give you a list. Why don't we save that for bedtime? By the way, uh, you didn't happen to pick up any lemons, did you? Were they on the list? Uh, no, but I, I've heard somewhere that they could get stains out of silk. Oh, nothing gets stains out of silk. So far, I'd have to agree. That's my blouse. Yeah, I know. I borrowed it to wear to a job interview. I tried calling to ask if it was OK, but I couldn't get through, so I just didn't think you'd mind. Job interview? Yeah, I was looking through the want ads and I found the perfect job for the personal assistant to a CEO. I called them and wanted me to come right in, and then I didn't have anything to wear, and then I saw this blouse and it was the perfect color match for my skirt. It was a couple sizes too big, so I kind of had to roll the sleeves up and wear it as like a drapey thing. But anyways, the good news is the interview went great. Afterwards, I wanted to go get a smoothie to celebrate, and then this jerk of a guy spilled a veggie cocktail all over me. The stain doesn't look like a from a spilled drink. Yeah, um, that's because I tried to use the shampoo from the bathroom to get it out. You know, you might want to think about getting some new hair products. I mean, if it does that to material, imagine what it's doing to your roots. I'm so sorry. I'll pay for the blouse. No, it's OK. No, it's not OK. She is taking advantage of our hospitality, and it's wearing a little thin. 
mean, have you looked at the bathroom wastebasket lately? Well, apparently, excess styling mousse combined with a leaky bottle of nail polish remover makes a mighty corrosive little cocktail. Ate right through the bottom of the wicker basket. I think I have to ask her to leave. She can go to a hotel for the night. You don't have to do that. At least not on my account. I also have family, some of whom have threatened to pay a visit as well. Well, at least have to have a talk with her. Let her know that she's entered the land of unacceptable behavior. <laughs> Stereo. Mm, from the look of you, I'd say your house guest hasn't yet packed her bags. Do the words daybreak rhythmic chanting mean anything to you? Yeah, they mean warm up the sprinklers. I tried to have a talk with her this morning about proper guest etiquette, but I don't think it quite sunk in. I had the feeling I might as well have been talking to one of the plants. Speaking of that, I think she dumped her diet soda in the potted pond. What? It's looking kind of thick. We'll call from the hospital. Sergei's regained consciousness. It's okay. Someone took your kidney. You almost died because of it. Anything you can tell us about who did this to you would help us a lot. I can't. It will kill my family. Who? Who would do that, Sergei? You think by not talking that you're protecting yourself and your family, but the only ones you're protecting are the people that did this to you. The hospital found this in your pocket. This is your family, isn't it? So, okay, we we'll do everything we can to see that they're safe. But you have to tell us what you know. So the same thing that happened to you doesn't happen to the other people they brought here. And to how many other people after that? They came to my father's house. They say he didn't keep up with payments for his shop. They say if I agree to come here and do this, they forgive his debt. Who are these people? What's your word? Mobsters. They're not from my village. What about here in Washington? Someone must have given you instructions on, on what to do, where to go. I had a contact phone number, but when I tried to call it after operation, it, it didn't work anymore. Is there anything else you could remember that could help us find them? My cousin, Vanya, he is flying in to do what I did. They will be meeting him. Flight 718 from Gatwick, due in at 9.45 tonight, shows a Vanya Surabiev on the passenger list. SOG's on notice, they'll be there waiting. We expect the MO will be the same as with Sergey. A limo will pick up cousin Vanya and take him to the motel. One with large cockroaches. Very large. He'll then be contacted and the surgery to extract one of his kidneys will be set up. Well, but those are words you never really thought you'd say. SOG will stay on him until he meets with someone. We'll then pick up whoever it is, try to turn him and start working our way up the food chain. Hopefully all the way up to this man. Thanks to the law enforcement on the ground in Grodzny, we now have the name of a man we think may be the ringleader. Is there anything you can't do? No. Oh, but there are some things I won't do. His name is Fyodor Petrov. He's Lithuanian, trained by the KGB, now known as one of the biggest mob bosses in the Baltics. His syndicate is into all kinds of things illegal, drugs, weapons, extortion, and now, apparently, black market organs. Veritable one-stop shop at the Criminal Convenience Mart. Pick up an AK-47 and a gallbladder and be home by the time wrestling comes on. Any idea where Petrov calls home these days? We believe he's here in the US, somewhere on the East Coast. We're also working the other side of the equation. People who receive the organs from donors like Sergei. The hospitals, the recipients, doctors, time and date, are all recorded in the database. We're following up on every kidney transplant that happened in the US within 48 hours of Sergei's removal, where that kidney came through an organ broker. We get the right one, we'll have the name of the broker, and we might get to Petrov, or whoever is running the operation if it's not Petrov. Or at least the name of the doctor that was hired to hack out Sergei's kidney. If he even is a doctor, 
Unfortunately, all Sergei remembers from his operation is that it was a middle-aged man wearing a surgical mask. Let's hope Cousin Viney can lead us to where we can get a look under that mask. Sam 36, subject is getting out of the cab. And he's heading into a little storefront. We're moving around at the back. Just a checkup of the main event. One way to find out. Hi, you the doctor? FBI! Hey, whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa, whoa, hey, 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 what? Friend of your cousin Sergey's. You speak English? Okay. I'm with the FBI. Come out the back. Any sign of him here? Uh, Sam 32, subject is out of visual. Didn't even get a chance to ask him about my sore knee. Any luck? Not a real chatty bunch, those Chechens. I'm letting my new mate Vanya take a little break from my subtle yet probing interviewing style. But the truth is, I don't think he knows any more than Sergey. What have you got? Terrifyingly scored with the recipient search. A man in Roanoke received a kidney transplant within 24 hours of Sergey's operation. The only one in that time frame from a private donor. He gave us the name of the broker, uh, Frank Dunn. We'll call him Mr. Organ Broker for clarity purposes. Right out. So we go pay Mr. Organ Broker a visit, and I'll gladly forget my little Chechen Mount Rushmore. I don't think we want to alert Mr. Organ Broker just yet, not until we have something concrete to arrest him on. If he won't cooperate, all we'll have done is tip our hand. Well, I'd say we tipped it pretty good already when we let that doctor slip out of that clinic. Well, no doubt he and all the other lowlifes in Petrov's gang have returned to their natural habitats in the primordial slime. So we either need something firm to roll Mr. Organ Broker on, or we need someone within the organization to help the lowlifes come back to the surface, bait them into a trap. What we need is Vanya to call his contact person and tell him he's still ready to play ball. Maybe Vanya would be more likely to help us if he was dealing with someone he trusts. Vanya, you must do it if people ask. It will be a hard career. A massacre, a sarcasm. Sergey's telephone number, hints of hidden yachts. Ushu Yosh, a shabba, shagazir to harir. Tichus, tichas sinachu, has been chashka iman in zerbats. These people saved my life. They are our only hope. There's a man who's behind all of this. His name is Petrov. And you can help us put him where he can never take advantage of anyone else again. What happens to me and Sergei? To our families if you fail? We won't fail, with your help. Vanya agreed to call his contact. He told them he also got away from the FBI, just like the doctor did. Those guys can't catch anybody. He's now safely tucked away with INS. Jack and Sue are getting married again. We've got a meeting set up with Petrov's organ broker. That would be Mr. Organ Broker to you. Where they'll tell him their sad story, that Jack's in desperate need of a kidney transplant, can he help? And since Vanya and Jack are the same blood type and the same size, we're pretty sure that Mr. Broker will have a match. We'll then arrest him and flip him. If all goes well, before I have the transplant. If we don't get there in time, will the Bureau actually pay for a transplant you don't really need? We're going to lay it on the line here. It's my medical records. 
tissue typing, condition, prognosis. As you'll see, I need a kidney, and I need it quickly. It can be very expensive. Whatever it takes. We have money. We'll pay whatever you want. shower ever since. I haven't had a chance to talk to her yet. He could have run away. He could have been hit by a car. He could get pneumonia. He's not getting pneumonia. Just dry his back legs. I would if you wrote him stuff. I'm trying to. You listen to us. We're on the same side and we're taking it out of each other. Stay leave. That's it. Enough is enough. Anita. Just a minute. I'm almost done. What'd you say? She said she's almost done. That's an understatement. Morning. Uh, we're all out of towels. Could one of you be a dub and go get me a clean one? So, you finally gave her the boot? It was long overdue. Putting Levi out in the rain was the final insult. She said she thought she was just leaving him in the stairwell. Like, that would be OK. And then she says, uh, the door to the back was open, so he must have gone out and the wind must have blown the door shut. Who knew? Well, I, I gotta say, you do look very poofy, buddy. And how did Cousin Anita take the news? Like she was the victim. No apology. Oh. You're never gonna believe this. INS just called. They released Vanya. What do you mean, released him? I mean, some low-level grade one employee over at the INS detention center got his paperwork mixed up with someone who was on a 24-hour hold. 24 hours were up, no further instructions, the place is overcrowded, so they kicked him. Unbelievable. Perhaps someone ought to kick them right in the seat of their incompetent paper-pushing pants. If I thought it would do any good, I would. But it doesn't change the fact that Vanya's disappeared off the radar. But I thought Vanya wanted to help us. Well, who knows what he's thinking? He's probably never been outside of his village. Now he's thousands of miles away in a country that is completely foreign to him. He's been in lockup all day. Somebody swings the door wide open and tells him to leave, which is not what we told him was going to happen. Has he been to see Suga? Not so far. We've got somebody sitting down at the hospital in case he does. Otherwise, we need to start working the phones, and get as much help as we can to try and reel him in before anyone figures out that we had him. We need his testimony. Not to mention his kidney. Believe it or not, coffee is fresh. I didn't say it was good. What was I thinking? Vanya has disappeared into the mist. You're feeling like this is your fault, but you can't control what INF does. I know, it's not that, it's this whole case. You ever feel like you've been given too much? More than you deserve. We all have blessings to be thankful for. I mean, take Sergey and Vanya. Coming from where they did, could have just as easily been me. Or any of us. But I get born in Wisconsin. Great parents, solid start. It's like I hit the lottery or something. And then the question becomes, what do you do with the ticket? You can sit back and never worry about anybody else. But you don't. You try to protect them. I think what God's interested in is a grateful heart. If you let him use you wherever he put you, that's all you can do. 
I think you're doing what you were put here to do. Maybe. I just got a call. I found Vanya. That Vanya? Yeah. How was he killed? I don't know. His chest and his back have both been opened up. And most of his organs are gone. Coroner's report confirms they took Vanya's liver, lungs, and both of his kidneys. Why would Vanya go with them? He was afraid what would happen to his family. He must have tried to keep his end of the deal. And they wanted more than he bargained for. Why would Petrov kill someone who's volunteering to give him what he wants? What he tells me is that Petrov was feeling the heat. What does he do when things get hot? He follows his pattern. He runs, just like he did from Europe to here. He has his own version of a going out of business sale on his way out of town. But one thing's for sure. He won't be waiting around very long to move the merchandise. Does it seem odd to anyone that we're referring to someone's organs as merchandise? In any event, we're against the clock here. We need to find something on Petrov before he leaves the country. Mr. Organbreaker. Let's pay him a return visit. No need to play it safe anymore. As you can see, I've had a miraculous recovery. We're gonna need you to come with us. We know this is the man whose kidney I was supposed to get through you. I didn't have anything to do with that. Good, then you won't mind helping us find out who did. Because right now, we can tie you to this man and one of those missing kidneys, but the charge just went up to accessory to murder. We want the name of the doctor. I harvest kidneys from willing donors. That shouldn't be a crime. Does that look like a willing donor to you? Jack the Ripper would have been proud. He was already gone by the time he got to me. What I do saves lives. And makes you very wealthy. That's not why I do it. Yeah? That's why the guy who hired you does it. And as you can see, he doesn't mind changing his business plan from time to time. His real name's Fyodor Petrov, Russian Mafia. And your little organ enterprise is just one of his endeavors. We want to know what name he goes by now. Think about it, mate. We know who he is and we know what he does. It's only a matter of time before we get what we want, at which point we won't need you anymore. And when we don't need you, we don't make deals. It's, uh, Grabyev. He ran the airlines, and there's a guy last name Grabyev with an open-ended reservation to Buenos Aires. We traced the credit card number. He's been hiding in plain sight. Address is less than a mile from here. We're very late. No problemo. I know all the shortcuts. Ordinarily, I'd take six, but uh, I'm good mates with the dispatcher. That's the key to this job. Take good care of the dispatcher. Anyway, he told me right before I picked his up to avoid six Wilson and Hampton. Now, yesterday, completely different story. The uh, smart play was Connecticut to 15th. Round Vermont, of course, avoid New York Avenue like the plague. Try and just get us there. Oh, now I know what you're thinking. Stop sign. Here you are in a hurry. Statistics show you actually spend less time at a stop sign than a traffic light. But you didn't know that. Fascinating. Yeah. I'm not making this up, they did a study. FBI, guns on the floor, your hands out in front where I can see them. I get out. On a shortcut to our detention centre too. Go out of the car. I've got to start ordering food sooner. I wait till I'm too hungry and then I want to eat everything in sight. I know. If that takeout guy doesn't get here soon, I'm leaving. I'm going to get something like maybe a whole chicken. There might be some tofu sanya in the fridge. I'll never be that hungry. Isn't it nice to have our house back? Hmm. I guess sometimes you need a little shake up to appreciate the things you take for granted in life. Like sleep? Mm, and hot water? Yes. And a roof over your head here? Oh. 
I know I said I'd leave and never come back. And I am. I will. But... Did you forget something? No. Well, I mean, when you asked me to leave, I acted like it was all right. But the truth is, it hurt. Because it made me come face to face with myself. Everything you said was right. I'm selfish and inconsiderate, and I hope you'll forgive me. Come here. There's something else, too. I lied to you before. There wasn't any conference in Miami. My roommate back in Michigan kicked me out. I didn't have anywhere else to go. I always wanted for people to love me. But I'm so afraid they won't. I do things to push them away first so I won't get hurt. I don't want to do that anymore. I admire you having the courage to come here and finally be honest. She says if you need a place to stay, you can stay here, temporarily. That's very generous of you. But I have to get back home and apologize to a few other people we both know. You know, I do kind of like it around here. Maybe if I came back, you could help me find a place. I think we can do that. Thank you both. <laughs> Thank you, Levi. Thank you, too. And I'm sorry. <laughs> We talked to INS. We're going to do whatever we can to help you stay here in the States if you want. Thank you. But my place is back home with my family. I'm sure they'd be happy to have you back. I talked to the league at. He'll also do whatever he can to help you. Thank you. Well, now with Petrov in jail, we have a chance. What's all this? Handing out early paychecks, are we? Not exactly. This is more about giving than receiving. Hmm. Oh, should we? The world may not be ready for this, but... Organ donor form. Not interested? No. I already am a card-carrying donor. You? Of course. After all, of what use is this mortal clay to me after the spark of life is gone, if not to be of some service to another? That's very noble, Miles. Yeah, but a little scary. I mean, imagine having his heart. I wonder what would happen if they took the best parts of all of us and made one super cyber FBI agent. We'd start with my looks, of course. My brain? Sue's heart? Sorry, Miles. I'll try to get over it. Lucy smile. Jack's eyes. Thank you. Did I mention Lucy Smile? I believe you did. <laughs> yeah. Your floppy ears, definitely. Although I like your ears as well. Yeah, you do have nice ears. 